Welcome to today's eShowcase, Innovations in Ultrasonic Measurement. I would like to thank today's sponsor, Flexum Americas, for sponsoring today's event. Today's presenter is John Van Nostren, the Water Market Manager for Flexum Americas Corporation. And now I will hand the microphone over to John. Thank you, Dylan. I appreciate that very much. Give me one second here. So thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And as Dylan said, we're going to be talking about innovations in ultrasonic flow measurement and some of the changes that are really helping uh, the industry. Okay, so the goal of the presentation really is to facilitate the recent developments in ultrasonic flow measurement from Flexum and to familiarize you with the reason why that Flexum may be the best choice for your meter installations and retrofits in the water and wastewater applications. I'm going to go through a little bit about Flexum, the company, the theory behind the measurement, and Flexum meters that are used today in water applications and um, why these meters are successful in locations where others are not. So Flexum Americas is a wholly owned subsidiary of Flexum GMBH, which is shown on the left. Flexum Americas on the right hand side there is based in Edgewood, New York. And this is where we have a uh, 20,000 square foot facility where all of our uh, North American operations are held, including sales and marketing, R&D, production, calibration, and service. We also have offices in Illinois, California, and Houston as well. So Flexum manufactures a number of different meters. The four series and the six series meters are portable, and they can be carried into the field for spot checking, doing temporary service and verification for calibration of other meters that might be in service. The permanent meters are the five series and the seven series. And there's also uh, an eight series meter, which is for class one div one locations. It's not very common in water wastewater applications, but in the collection system, sometimes we'll run into those. So training and knowledge is very important and Flexum is dedicated to sharing the knowledge in a number of ways like individual trainings. We can bring trainings together that are specific to the needs of, of your team, for example. And we offer training at our factory in New York and our other facilities around the country, as well as in the virtual environment, such as this. We also participate in you know, a lot of different trade shows and webinars. So let's jump right into how the meters work. Transit time meters, as the name implies, measures the difference in time travel between ultrasonic pulses that are transmitted in the direction of and against the flow. So this type of measurement is also often referred to as time of flight or time of travel. So the, the top sinusoidal waveform in this graphic is the energy that's traveling from the upstream to the downstream transducer. The bottom sinusoidal waveform is the energy traveling from the downstream transducer to the upstream transducer. And it's the difference in time between them. It's called a, what we call a spatial shift in the measurement. And that is proportional to the velocity of the media. It's important to note that if there were no time difference between them, that would indicate that there's no flow. So that, uh, in itself is, is unique because we dynamically measure zero flow. Flow meters of other types typically would require some flow before they begin to measure. So this is the only one that's really going to truly give you a zero measurement. So as you can imagine, that would be really an awesome situation when you're trying to find leaks in your water network. So one of the biggest advantages of clamp on ultrasonic flow meter is that it can be installed to meet the exact needs of your system. These devices are available in both permanent and portable, like I mentioned earlier, making the ultrasonic flow meters the most flexible water measurement tool that you could choose from. So retrofitting existing points, for example, 
If a mag meter fails, you can easily install a flexor meter right in its place using the existing power and signal wire and have an accurate flow measurement within a few hours and with no downtime. So for uh, new installations, there's a tremendous cost savings as well. And there's no need for bypass piping or conical reducers to increase the velocity of the media through a meter uh, because Flexum is capable of measuring extremely low flows down to 0 0.03 feet per second and extremely high flows as much as about 80 feet per second depending on the application so there's no need to uh, really ever cut into the line anymore when it comes to installing meters in the water wastewater market so the 721 this is the workhorse this is a clamp on measurement solution that's in the same category you know the flex of meters that we've grown to love this is the, the the newest version the 721 wd wd means basically water detection this is a meter that's designed for water and wastewater applications specifically the wd is really a nice package because it has everything that you need in one box the the meter the transducers the uh the mounting hardware etc so the uh, meter itself is capable of measuring and turn down range of 160 to 1 to put that into perspective you would expect a uh, an orifice plate or a venturi to be in the range of about 4 to 1. so this meter is extremely capable when it comes to a wide variety of flow velocities So there are really seven factors that have led to the success of Flexum being uh, the leader in the water wastewater market for ultrasonics. And I'd just like to kind of go through those briefly. And um, essentially, when I say the first one is zero maintenance, uh, what we do now is we use a coupling pad rather than a gel, meaning that there's no reason to go back and revisit. And we calibrate every meter and every pair of transducers that leaves the factory. That means that you don't have to worry about doing the a calibration in the field when you install it, meaning that you would have to obtain zero flow. This is something that must be done with other manufacturers, but when you when you use a flexometer, it's already been done at the factory. We also match those crystals in the transducers. I'll get into that a little bit more in detail. We've got an excellent robust mounting track. That means that, you know, you're not going to have to worry about just strapping the transducers right onto the pipe and then they may shift. And we have a variety of transducers available depending on the application. It can be shear wave, lamb wave, and a variety of different frequencies. So we, we, we can match the transducers to the application to ensure the best performance. And we compensate every pair of transducers for temperature change, which I'll go into a little bit more. And then we do some very special things with the digital signal processing that others don't. And I'll go into those details a little bit to give you a little bit of uh, reasoning behind it. So with the uh, zero maintenance clause, basically what we're talking about there is using a um, coupling pad that's kind of a rubber material, it's a Viton material, and that takes the place of grease. Most manufacturers with ultrasonics use a grease that uh, will dry up or get crusty over time and it'll have to be replaced. It'll have to be, you know, recoupled. And with the Flexum meter, it's really designed to set it and forget it. We've got these installed now that I know of for 12 years on, on wastewater applications, water applications, and even hot water applications where, you know, you're up above 200 degrees F and there's no issues whatsoever this is what it looks like i typically use a uh, a small bead of grease to hold the pad on so that when you slip it into the track it stays nice and flat against the face of the transducers and put them in the track and you're done so uh i mentioned calibration calibration is important and our transducers are calibrated in a nist traceable Cal lab under 17025 standard. So other manufacturers require a user to calibrate or set zero in the field. 
Zero flow is nearly impossible to attain and often creates more error than it resolves because there's movement in the pipe and you zero that out. Now you've got a bad, you've got basically an offset that you're programming into the meter. So we eliminate that by um, calibrating at the factory and we've got this traceable accuracy. The, the accuracy that you're going to expect to attain when you put the transducers on the pipe is plus or minus 1% of the actual rate with a repeatability spec of 0.15%. And the reliability is 100%. At Flexum, we match the piezoelectric crystals. So each transducer has a piezoelectric crystal in it. And to get the tightest possible accuracy before even sending them to the Cal rig, we match those transducers and we call it a wedding. So we have a lot of weddings at Flexum. And that just means that these transducer frequencies are matched precisely so that there's less room for error before we even send them to the calibration facility. We also integrate the cables and the mounting into a robust mounting solution that's industrial hardened and good to go for years to come. I don't know if you can really see it, but on the top of our transducer, you can see an arrow that's that's etched into the metal. So on the back transducer, we've got the back part of the arrow, the quill, and then on the front trans of the transducer, we got the pointy part of the arrow. So we put these together, that gives us the direction of the flow. So there's no longer any guesswork about which is the upstream, which is the downstream, which way do the transducers go in the track? Do they go face to face? Do they go front to back? Etc. So it's really an easy visual that enables us to get installed properly right from the start. No one else does that. Just a simple thing that makes a big difference. Flexum offers lamb wave and shear wave transducers as well. This means that you can measure liquids and gases or um, using a Doppler or a uh, transit time method or measure steam, compressed air, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a number of applications that we can do. And the reason for that is because of our transducer technology. One of the things that go into the transducer technology is temperature compensation. And Flexum uses an embedded RTD in the transducer block. This is an actual RTD, not a thermistor or anything like that. It, and it's not part of the measurement process. Rather, it's used to temperature compensate the transducers to account for any thermal effects. The transducers are characterized over the entire temperature range of their capability. So the standard liquid temperature can be up to about 266 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't typically see anything that high in the water wastewater market. We also have extended range transducers that can get us up to 450 degrees, as well as um, wave injector that can get us to 1100 degrees and even into cryogenic applications. So there are many industries that we serve. Um, water and wastewater is a, is a big, big portion of our business, about 30% overall. However, in the oil and gas market and refineries, we'll see those high temperatures. So that's why we offer it. So I'd like to include this slide because it depicts that embedded RTD. So Flexum is the only manufacturer that offers this. And this is a major differentiator over other transducers that, uh, that are affected essentially by temperature shift in those transducer blocks. So we put the RTD in the transducer itself. And, you know, just imagine if you had a... Uh, a pipe that's running horizontally and you've got and it's outdoors and you've got the the sun coming up on the east side and going down on the west side and the transducers are on opposite sides of the pipe they are greatly affected by uh thermal effects with the with the flexometer you don't have that and we kind of learned this early on and essentially what we see here is uh asme also identified the need for temperature compensation in transducers and they wrote a spec for it it's mfc5m 
and Flexum is the only one that meets that standard. So when we started doing some testing, we we realized that you know we 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 basically in this test what we did is we put a cap on a, two ends of a pipe, filled it with water, put a pair of transducers on it, and just measured zero over a period of time. This is one major manufacturer that competes with Flexum in the pink line. The flexum meter is the blue line and the temperature is the brown line. You can see the temperature only changed a couple of degrees, but look at the output of the flexum meter right at zero versus the output of the other meter. That's all over the place. That's, you know, six high point was six gallons per minute with no movement whatsoever. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but six gallons a minute is a velocity that translates to many, many, many hundreds of gallons on a larger pipe. <laughs> so, and, you know, we live in, we live in the, and talk in terms of velocity. So, um, you know, the diameter pipe wall thickness and things like that come into play when we calculate the actual gallons per minute. But we started realizing that this was a, a phenomenon that we saw even without major changing in temperature shift between the upstream and downstream transducer. So we, we decided to get a little more scientific and we got into a, a scenario where we have an oven where we could put the transducers in a stable temperature environment and observe the output and see what we have here is the uh, the flexometer again the blue line shows over time and the range of temperature from 40 to 113 degrees f that's very common for water wastewater applications we run those temperatures quite a bit so um, we thought we would do some testing and here's what we found. The zero on the flexometer because of the temperature compensation circuit remains stable. What you're seeing with the red line and the green line are changes in temperature in the red and changes in sound speed of the media with the green. So we actually measure the sound speed of the media on a regular, you know, continuous basis. And um, that temperature and sound speed changes, but you'll see that the zero remains the same. Now, if we look at another major competitor, we can see that that zero drifts around. There's another manufacturer where it drifts quite a bit. So, um, like I said, this shows a drift of about 0.1 feet per second, which is about nine gallons a minute on a six inch pipe. So that's error that you're gonna live with right from the beginning. <clears throat> Another amazing technology difference with Flexum is the digital signal processing. So here's a leading brand method for uh, signal processing. They digitally impose a marker on the sinusoidal waveform. So through the electronics, this marker is statistically placed at the highest peak to peak waveform. And that mark is called their zero crossover. And there's an electronic detection window that's set up when you first start up the meter. And you'll see sometimes when you put the meter on, you'll get stage one, stage two, working, working. And it's basically doing this process where it does a handshake between the upstream and downstream transducers and it finds that sinusoidal waveform. So um, the math is pretty simple. If, if they send 100 digital marks and they receive 50 of them, they know they've got uh, signal strength of 50 percent, which is easy enough. Sometimes that digital mark though can move when the process changes, when the temperature of those transducer blocks change dramatically, when the flow stream changes. What happens is that digital mark can actually find its way outside of that window, and now what you have is a signal loss. So what Flexum does is we use First of all, we use twice the transmit voltage of other ultrasonic meters, which enables us to do the really tough applications. And what I mean by that is I'm talking like duct iron, cement line pipe, concrete recast pipe. We can measure those where others can't. And part of the reason is because of this, we have a much higher propagation signal. And then we essentially digitally mark that entire sinusoidal waveform. So instead of putting that single mark on the waveform, we put eight 
digital marks on each waveform. So depending on the frequency of the transducer, it could be anywhere from 80 to 200 digital marks. So we're counting those just as much as the, the other guys, but we're also measuring and counting all of those digital marks. So we're not only measuring how much signal is arriving, what the percentage is, but we're also measuring the fidelity of the wave. We have a quality measurement of that signal. That's a big thing. So the, uh, you know, we meet the specification. The AWWA M3 handbook for resource management, which is at Flexum, we're very familiar. I'm actually on the committee for the C750 and um, I'm very familiar as well with the C715, which is the revenue standard for water wastewater applications. And Flexum is accepted. So our calibration rig at our factory in New York is uh, uses one of two methods for calibration. The conventional method is using a, a meter, a master meter in comparison when we have a device under test, which would be the production meter or our, our, our meter that we're going to ship to customers. And we actually can measure any variance between our master meter and our calibration meter. Now, we also offer what we call Apercal, and this is an aperture calibration. And this is a rig that Flexum has developed. And uh, a lot of the nuclear industry has adapted this technique because of its reliability. And essentially what we're doing here is, um, you know, as I mentioned with the conventional method, we do a comparison and of the device under test. And with this one, essentially, it's a, uh, a bath where we put the transducers into the face, the face of the transducer into the water. And then we move one transducer extremely precisely using lasers to simulate velocity change. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking out any flow disturbance or flow profile disturbances that you're gonna see from flowing water into a stilled position. And now we can accurately measure the transit time down to, you know, we're, we're in the quarter percent of the, of the indicated value. However, we don't publish that because we, we don't really know the condition of your pipe in the field. So when we put the meter on, we still publish plus or minus 1% of the rate. However, it's a much more accurate flow calibration method, and it is accepted by AWWA. In addition to that, we calibrate every transmitter. This is an electronic calibration, and, um, you know, we go out to like the 10th digit on these. So it, it's a very precise electronic calibration. Here are some examples of the typical calibration certificate that are shipped with every meter and every transducer pair. So the certificate on the left is for the transducers, while the certificate on the right is for the transmitter. The calibration is independent for each device. And that's a big deal because if any competitors calibrate, they'll normally take the transmitter and the calibration and the uh, transducers and the calibration together. Now they become calibrated together and they must remain together. So what we do is we see the uh, the sense prom down here, this little chip, and this little chip has the calibration for the transducers, and that it resides with the transducer. Though, so that's shipped along with the transducers. You plug that into the flow computer, the transmitter. Now they're mated, so you do the mating yourself in the field, and especially on large projects, that that becomes important because. You know, you don't want to have to have all of those meters shipped together and installed together. It can be quite confusing. On top of that, if you have a spare set of transducers on hand, now you can plug them into any meter and the calibration stays with them. Um, the question often comes up about how much straight run is necessary. And the installation recommendation for direct mount transducers is typically five diameters downstream and 10 diameters upstream of an elbow. 
this is an industry standard and it has nothing to do with any particular technology. It's a matter of physics and all meters are affected by upstream disturbances. So we've learned a lot. And um, with the reflect mount, we can now reduce that from 10 and five to, you know, more in the range of about uh, three and, and two. And additionally, what we've done is we've done a lot of testing on how the flow profile behaves downstream of an elbow, for example, or 45. And so now what we've done is we've, we've developed an algorithm. So in addition to those seven factors for success that I mentioned, at Flexum, we, you know, we've learned over the years how those profiles behave and the introduction of upstream disturbances, what, what it does to the flow profile. And as a result, we now have this feature called profile correction and disturbance correction and we can essentially program in the radius of an elbow for example or how far you are downstream of it and the flow meter does a correction for the flow profile so it's quite unique and it enables you to get accurate flow measurement with minimal straight run and that's programmed right from the meter so when you install it what you'll do is you'll put the transducers on the pipe, you'll measure the distance from the bend, for example, and then you'll put that value in and the meter does the rest for you. Flexum also offers a feature called noise track. It's a Doppler technique that works by sending a beam of energy tuned to a precise frequency into the wall of the pipe. So when that energy hits a moving object, it bounces back toward the source, very much like weather radar or police radar. And that uh, essentially the, uh, the receiver is a transmitter as well, so that one sensor does the work of transmitting and receiving. And uh, basically the wave that's coming back is treated as an entirely new wave as if it were emitted from that target. And when it bounces off of an item, it could be like uh, solids in the water or air bubbles or something like that. Um, in sewage applications, it would be, you know, uh, particles that are in, in the flow stream. And essentially what we're doing is we're measuring that frequency shift. Now, when we see those particles and we're bouncing a signal off of them, you know, they're moving in a flow direction, but these reflectors could be moving up and down and swirling around as they're moving. So, the and this is the inherent problem with the Doppler technique. It's not as accurate as the trains of time. However, it still could be 3% or so versus the 1%. And that may be just enough to get over a hump. For example, we had in the New York metropolitan area, we had a very large pipe where um, during a rain event, they were uh, essentially sucking air into the into the in, inlet of the pump, and that air was becoming entrained in the process enough that we could lose the signal on the transit time, and the Doppler worked. So we could actually then switch from transit time to Doppler, and then the meter will begin to read in Doppler mode, continue to operate, and then look for the transit time signal. And when it comes back, it would go back into transit time. So that's one method that we can do. We can also do dual channel. We do have, from time to time, we have pump stations that cavitate or a lot of times, you know, these personal wipes and all get in the pumps and it, it creates problems where we need to go into Doppler mode. We'll leave one channel on Doppler mode and one channel on transit time mode and let them average on a regular basis. It works extremely well. Um, I think about the presidential street wastewater treatment plant in Savannah, Georgia, where we had that exact situation occur. So the, the 721 meter from Flexum is, is suitable for all applications that you're going to run into in the water, wastewater and distribution type applications, as well as in process, you know, from, from, uh, production water to wastewater. Any of those applications that you run into, including sludge, we can take care of it. We've got a very strong signal and we've got noise suppression technology. And essentially, 
you know, this is a meter that you're going to be able to use in all of your water wastewater applications and we guarantee it or we will take it back. So what I mean by that is I'm not talking about a manufacturer's defect guarantee. I'm talking about if you buy a fleximeter and you install it in the process and it doesn't work for the application for which it is intended, we will take it back. We guarantee that it's going to work where you intend to use it. And we review every application to ensure that we have experience in the application. Or if we don't have experience in the application, which most applications in water wastewater we do. However, sometimes a customer is skeptical. So they're like, well, how do I know it's really going to work? Well, this is how we put a portable meter and do a test. Now we have no problem at all guaranteeing that it's going to work because we've already tested the technology and we know that it's going to work. And we can do this in about 10 minutes. We can set up a meter and get flow readings in about 10 minutes. So what you see there is the F601. This is the workforce portable meter. The F401, this is a nice meter for water distribution networks, for example, because um, it can essentially go to sleep and wake up, take readings and go back to sleep again. So you get baseline data and you can determine then what's going on in the process, what's going on in the piping. Additionally, it's in a uh, watertight enclosure, so you can close it up. I've actually put this in a, uh, in a wet well and the wet well flooded. I came back and the, the meter was floating and the, the transducers were on the pipe still and everything was just working fine. So um, it's a it's a great meter for that. Additionally, if you wanted to, you can put a you know a, a cord through the handle and wrap it around a pole if you had to leave it outside. We don't really recommend it. I mean, there's nothing that's totally um, theft proof, but it is it is more secure. So essentially, what happens when we go on to a pipe? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be clamping onto the outside of the pipe with our transducers. And now we uh, we look at the wall thickness of the pipe and there's a couple of ways we can determine what that is. One, we could use an ASME pipe table to determine the wall thickness. We know, for example, it's schedule 40 pipe. We can put that value in. We also have with the 601 portable meter, a wall thickness gauge that's ultrasonic as well. And we can actually physically measure the wall thickness of the pipe. Now, why does the wall thickness of the pipe become important? Because it has a much different sound speed than the media. For example, water at 70 degrees has a sound speed of about 1,490 meters per second. The sound speed of ductile iron is in the range of about 5,000 meters per second. So the sound travels much faster through the wall of the pipe than it does through the media. There may be a liner in the pipe, for example, a concrete liner, which has a different sound speed. So these are things that we need to know when we install it. And we can actually physically measure the diameter of the pipe. We can measure the, the, the circumference of the pipe. We can, uh, we know what the water sound speed is and what it should be reporting. So we actually put the meter on the pipe, we measure it. And if we are within that range of sound speed me measurement, then we, then we know that we've got it set up and installed properly. If that number is pie in the sky or wrong, doesn't agree with what we know it should be, now we have to look at something else. Did we put the proper diameter in? Did we put the wall thickness in correctly? So we can in, ensure that we have good diagnostics before we even begin to report the flow measurement. And that's really, really important. Another thing that Flexum does that others don't do, because we have a very tight sound speed measurement and we utilize that sound speed measurement, if you remember when I was showing the slides from the temperature testing that we did, You'll, you'll, you saw the, the blue line and then the red line and the green line. Well, the red line and the green line, one of them was the temperature of the media and the other was the, um, the, the sound speed of the media as the temperature, as it relates to temperature. So what we're doing here essentially is we can calibrate the temperature when we first install the meter 
we measure the sound speed, we, we measure the temperature of the water, we program those values. Now, as the water temperature changes, we can report that sound speed change as it relates to temperature. So what we're doing here is we're using the sound speed of the media to measure the temperature of the media and report that value. And it's plus or minus about one half a degree is what you would expect to see across the entire range of your water, your water system. <clears throat> this is what the permarail track looks like. Essentially, this is where the transducers are mounted inside of that track and that's strapped onto the pipe. It's a very robust mounting and it uses those coupling pads that I've mentioned for a maintenance free installation. Advanced meter verification is an integrated tool that Flexum uses and essentially what we're doing here is we're measuring the diagnostics when the meter is first installed and we save those diagnostics in, in a uh, memory inside the transmitter. So when we come back at a later time, we can take a look at what the value was when we first installed it and we can get a a maintenance report from that to determine if there have been any variances and if there have been any variances then we can decide at that point what to do with about it maybe it uh, re would require a calibration and uh so that's the purpose of the amv so we also offer the advanced meter verification tablet so now what we're talking about here is either loading software onto your laptop or providing this tablet that has software on it so you don't have to worry about going through IT or anything like that. You can walk right up to the meter, connect it, get your um, your, your uh, setup and all programmed either through this device or if you have a hotspot, either using a, a wireless LAN or phone hotspot connection. Our technician from anywhere can log in and assist you with ensuring that the meter is set up properly and that you have the advanced meter diagnostics, that they're all correct and it's a good application. And the meter verification, it can be done from a remote location as well. So this virtual technician is a really good tool. This is something that we really developed through COVID. And, um, it, it's proven to be a tremendous help to all of our customers that use it. Some references, now this is not everything, but these are some customers in the water wastewater market that are throughout North America. And uh, we have many more than this, but this is just kind of uh, a broad overview of the you know, customers that are using flexum meters and water and wastewater applications. So these applications that we're going to run through here are uh, direct berry. This particular one is a direct berry. And that's, again, this is one of those things that flexum will do that many others won't, is that we have a procedure that we can actually uh, assist you in ensuring that everything is installed properly. And there are times where you, you may not be able to put in a metering ball. And as a result, we can put those transducers directly on the pipe and bury them into the ground. So what we see here, the first one on the top picture is a 24 inch cement line ductile iron pipe. And then the one on the bottom is a 30 inch carbon steel pipe. So in both cases, those transducers were backfilled without any concern. Now, this is a very interesting one. I love this application. This is an application in North Texas where they were looking at replacing large mag meters that had failed. These were old Fisher Porter mag meters from the 70s and on 60 inch concrete pipes. They were looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and weeks of downtime to do this project. And uh, it had already been over budget more than once. So what we're looking at here is an OD of 63 inches. And what we were able to do with our portable meter is test the application to ensure that it's going to be a good one. So we, again, we provide that guarantee that it's going to work or we'll take it back. And what we've done here is we had uh, where they were going to be looking at weeks of downtime. 
we had our technician come in and before lunch he had this installed and up and running the, the customer was extremely pleased so lead and copper is a is something that's kind of a, a buzzword and a very hot topic if you have lead and copper you know what i'm talking about the action levels now have changed and i believe we're looking at 10 parts per billion versus 15 and essentially what we're finding and have found with lead and copper is that when you install it um when you install the meter a mag meter, for example, and you have lead and copper, now you have to inject orthophosphates into the process to coat the inside of the pipe. You're also coating the inside of your meter and you foul the meter when you do that. So uh, with Flexum, we don't have that issue. So now if you had water balance issues when you have lead and copper, um, we can help resolve that. And we have done that in a number of places and I'd be happy to provide references. Manganese is another one. You know, if you have iron oxide in your water or higher iron content in your water, here is what a, a picture of that iron oxide would look like under a microscope. And each little particle has a north and a south pole. It's like a tiny little magnet and it coats the inside of your metal piping. And then it also coats the inside of your magnetic flow meters if you have them in the process. So essentially what it'll do is it'll coat the inside of the mag meter and create a direct short for your electrodes. Now you have a, an electrical path from one electrode to the other and it shorts the meter. Now the meter, if you were to remove it and clean these physically, the electrode cleaning circuit that some manufacturers offer does not work on this, on this problem. And I, I know that firsthand. So what we, uh, what we do with the fleximeter is we clamp onto the outside of the pipe we let that coat the inside of the pipe. It doesn't coat thick enough for it to interfere with the accuracy of the meter. And we are no longer worried about any of the chemical coatings on the inside of the pipe or the natural coatings on the inside of the pipe. This is an application where we tested, and this is over about a two year period. And this is the flexible meter versus a leading mag meter. And this leading mag meter also had electrode cleaning circuit. And the orange line there is the flexum meter. The meter was showing about 1600 gallons a minute. And the mag meter was showing 1600 gallons a minute when it was installed. Over about a two year period, it went to half the flow. And the reason for this is that manganese was present in this well. And it basically just coated the inside of the meter and inside of the pipe creating the meter to foul, which caused lower readings over time. And this led to a lot of water balance issues for this utility. And um, putting meters, putting flexum meters in resolved it completely. So we also know, we, you know, we assist a lot of water and wastewater utilities. And we've learned that in most piping networks, especially in drinking networks that are, you know, that, that are district, type uh, networks, we see that um, flows range below three feet per second, even during peak demand. Now I say three feet per second because that is this the magic number for mag meters. Mag meters like flows in the range of three to 33 feet per second. Now they'll work at lower flows, but the accuracy begins to degrade below three feet per second. And, um, you know, in net, water networks, we see that, you know, we see flows down to 0.26 feet per second and, and sometimes they even flow backwards. So there may be water that's basically flying under the radar and not being accounted for on low flow conditions because the meter is unable to capture it. The flexible meter can capture it. So uh, mentioned measuring on concrete pipes. This is a, a very interesting thing. This is, again, something that Flexum can do that others don't. And again, we guarantee that it's going to work in the application. You got concrete pipe or HDPE pipe or carbon steel pipe or ductile iron, cement line pipe. All of those are 
or popular pipes in the water wastewater market, but not all meters will work on them, and Flexum does. Here's an application that was subterranean, and it's a very large pipe, and this is on, um, this is a steel pipe. And essentially what we did here is we buried those transducers directly into the ground, and th that meter's just working extremely well for long, many years. This is a uh, production well. This is a drinking water line. It's uh, headed to the to the drinking water treatment facility, and it's a 12 inch stainless steel pipe. Here's another one that's a uh, lift station. This is a sewage lift station. That's a new construction. It's an eight inch stainless steel pipe on raw sewage. This is an this is a great one. I love this one. This is uh, a, a very common application in wastewater treatment plants. And what we see here, this is in uh, St. Augustine, Florida, Anastasia Island, du a 20 inch ductile iron pipe, cement line, raw sewage. There are two treatment trains on this uh, on this plant site. And essentially what you see on the head works here is the meter installed and then down below on each treatment train, there is a 20 inch ductile iron pipe where we're measuring. Um, this is a very fun one too. This is in the Northeast. It's a very old infrastructure that dates back to 1857. I'm not so sure this pipe is that old, but the uh, much of it is. And there's an interconnect between uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, and they're selling water to a utility in New York State. It's a 16 inch ductile iron pipe with cement liner, and they were using turbine meters in this application, and they were not capturing flow <clears throat> off peak times. <clears throat> Excuse me, they were not capturing off peak flows because it was under, you know, flowing below the capability of that meter. So they put flexing meters on there and resolved it. Uh, this is an interesting calibration verification where we can walk right up to a uh, pipe galley, connect onto the pipe and compare with the meters that are in service. In this case, it happened to be a mag meter and you can see that they're reading very closely. The mag meter is accurate. So that's, that's a good test that you can do using the portable meter. This customer installed magnetic flow meters um, to ensure proper dosing of sodium hypochlorite. And the mag flow meter didn't stand a chance during off peak times because it was flowing very low. And you can see, you know, 2.8 gallons per hour on a uh, 2.8 gallons per hour on a one inch schedule 80 pipe that translates to 0 0.13 feet per second. Again, we dynamically measure zero and we can measure very, very low flows. So it was an easy transition to uh, replace that mag meter with the Flexum. We also offer a meter that is specific for sodium hypochlorite applications in water and wastewater treatment. And uh, this meter is, is designed for this chemical additive. So here we have a uh, very large pump station that's about 20 MGD that passes through it. They could not take this system down. They could not shut that, that pump off to do any kind of meter installation because it would take too long and they would have, they would have to march one truck after another, keeping that wet well from overflowing. And, um, the Flexum meter was an excellent solution for that because they had no downtime whatsoever. And now this has been in service for a number of years and you can see it remains pretty much underwater. That's our transducer mounting track there. So it's a little unusual to see a Venturi meter in wastewater stream, but here's one with mixed liquor. Needless to say, the impulse lines were plugging Flexum offered an easy installation and an easy trans transition from a problematic meter to, um, you know, reliable solution. Polymer dosing can be done accurately using Flexum meters as well. It's, uh, you know, polymer is an extremely expensive, expensive chemical. 
and, but it's extremely important in water wastewater, but you don't want to reuse it. And uh, we can help save costs by ensuring the proper dosing of polymer. It's a very good choice for these applications because we measure about eight times per second and polymer dosing and sodium hypochlorite dosing and things like that are typically used, are typically delivered using a uh, pulsating metering pump. Because we're measuring about eight times per second, we can measure those pulsations and we average them and um, it works extremely well. So the other thing I'd like to point out is the installation cost of a mag meter versus the installation cost of a fleximeter. You know, there's there's no calibration that needs to be done. You can, it's already been done at the factory. There's no downtime. There's no cutting of the pipe. When you add all those things up, you know, you're talking on a six inch meter, about $4,000 to install it. And I've actually seen some estimates from contractors that are, in the neighborhood of $11,000 to install a meter, where again, with the Flexum, we do it in, a, in about 15 minutes without any downtime or you know, special tools or cutting of the pipe or anything like that. So why is Flexum a good idea in the water wastewater applications? No need to shut the line down, no cutting of the pipe. There's no special equipment required, no zeroing. No need for automatic zero workarounds. There's no drift. You got reliable maintenance free measurement. The ability to measure very high, very low velocities. Factory calibration ensures the best accuracy in the field. We got the application guarantee. We have, uh, we meet the specs for water wastewater industry. I would like to open it up now. If you have any questions, be happy to answer them. Question comes up often about um, calibration interval. You know, how often do you need to calibrate? Well, with the advanced meter verification, we uh, we actually can determine if the calibration is necessary or not. And um, if it is necessary, we can do a number of different things. First, we can do a verification in the field with a portable meter and make adjustments if necessary. And then we can also uh, take those transducers off, ship them back to the factory, and we turn them around about one week. So calibration interval really depends on the customer in the industry. We see in pharmaceutical that um, it might be six months before you have to calibrate, where in the uh, water wastewater is more like three years. So ductile iron pipe, is another application that's really, really tough to measure. And the question came up from Assam about what about polyurethane wrapped ductile iron? That is a very good one. Polyurethane wrapped ductile iron works extremely well as long as it's tightly adhered to the pipe. If there's an air gap between the liner and the pipe or the, the external shell and the, and the wall of the pipe, then the signal can be lost. But in these polyurethane applications, they're typically spray on. So it is a very, very tight adhesion. And I've also done uh, bitumen, old, old, 100 year old bitumen pipe uh, that was carbon steel and ductile. So, um, yes, we can do those applications. Um, does it work for all pipe materials? The answer is yes, it does. We're able to measure on copper pipes, plastic pipes, HDPE pipes, steel pipes, ductile iron pipe, any pipe that you're gonna run into in a water wastewater application, we have done and can measure. So the other question came up, Roberto asked if uh, Flexum is so versatile, do you expect to shift away from mag meters? That is my quest. Yes, we expect to shift away from mag meters. I expect the industry is 
already beginning to do that. And uh, we're going to continue to work to educate customers because um, mag meters have application. There's no doubt about that. However, it's not necessary to install bypass piping and wait 26 weeks for a very large mag meter when you can install a fleximeter on your existing pipe. And once people start to see that, they start to realize where the meter can be used. They, they absolutely love it for that reason. This product, um, there was a question from Gregory. Can we use this product for uh, leak detection? Yes, it was uh, Adem, forgive me, not Gregory. So the leak detection, this really is designed for leak detection. Again, we can measure extremely low flows. I've got a list of references and success stories and application reports where we have done leak detection. It works extremely well for that. Um, Gregory asked a question about calibration. I hope that answered it. I would say if you're asking me for a recommendation as to how often it needs to be done, then um, it would be three years. So the distributor in Houston is uh, CC Lynch. Yeah, um, there, another question came up, can this meter be applied to unmetered fire lines? Absolutely. Now, what I can tell you is that I've seen in fire protection systems, algae begins to grow. And um, I, I've actually pulled a valve out of a fire line where, you know, there was a nice long path of green slime that was six feet long at, on the, you know, trailing in the uh, valves. So I would suggest that, you know, we want to have a nice straight run. We want to test the application because we do get a lot of algae growth in fire protection systems. But non-revenue water is extremely important to measure, and um, the fleximeter is super for that. Now, another question came up, do we have customers that prefer the clamp-on meter versus an inline permanent meter? And the answer is we always have a hurdle because we have those customers that have used mag meters or have used Venturi meters for a long time. And yes, the answer is we can replace those. However, it requires uh, a little bit of trust. And uh, once that customer tries the meter and can see how well it works in those applications, we gain that trust and then we begin replacing mag meters all over. For example, JEA in North Florida is the sixth largest utility. And it was the city of Jacksonville, but JEA's Jacksonville Electric Authority took over the water utilities. And they were anti-ultrasonic. And uh, for good reason, I mean, because they'd been burned for a, a number of years before using different techniques, trying to get a good measurement. And sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't and so on. So they didn't have a lot of trust. And um, going in and, and showing them what we were able to do and putting a portable in their hands to see you know, where they can put meters and get reliable measurement has been has been excellent. And they wound up buying that they they're probably our biggest water user. If, if not, they're, they're very close and uh, they've got hundreds of meters. So a uh, question came up from Rob about having meters installed in Arizona and very high ambient temperatures. Yes, we can do uh, high ambient temperatures and we do have meters installed in Arizona. So um, it's not a problem there. One of the places that I, I, I really love to talk about is NASA. We have the meters on the uh, launch pads and it gets quite warm when the rockets take off. <laughs> So, and we are, we are suitable for that shock and vibration environment as well. The meters can be installed on submerged pipe for sure. 
and uh, see if I've got any other questions. No, we're about to run out of time here. It is SCADA compatible. Jerry asked a question about compatibility with SCADA. We have a number of bus system communications as well as current outputs and discrete outputs and so on. So, yes, most of the collections meters that are installed are running through SCADA. Okay, so glass line, duct iron pipe, we can do. Absolutely, David. Uh, David Slaughter asked about that, as well as thickened sludge, and the answer is yes. We have low-frequency transducers that work extremely well on thickened sludge. When I say low-frequency, you know, I'm talking, we have a variety of frequencies that we can use from, if, if you kind of imagine, the, the ship's horn and the lunch whistle. So the lunch whistle is a real high-pitched sound. The ship's horn is very low frequency. The lower the frequency, the more power, essentially, to get through the pipe. We can take care of those applications quite easily. Well, John, I think we are at time for today. I would like to thank you for a great presentation and uh, also give a thank you to our sponsor, Flexum Americas, for sponsoring today's event. This concludes today's e showcase, and we thank everyone for attending. The recording will be available at wefbuyersguide.wef.org, and we will send all registrants an email tomorrow with the link. Please visit our event calendar to sign up for future events, and thank you for attending. Thank you, Dylan.